Black Wall Street family. This is Rachel Johnson coming to you from Friar Point, Mississippi. And we are here with the Chief of Police, Chief T. Vance of this community. We've uh, previously interviewed uh, his officers and we were so impressed with what he had to say. And if you've seen the videos, you already know we could not leave and not speak to him. So thank you, Chief Vance. We appreciate your time. Uh, we want to just uh, fill you in on the fact that when we spoke with your officers, we asked them uh, why and how, what is your method of operation? And uh, as you will see, the young men said, we were taught to community police, to be involved. He talked about you all have a, a ball game that the officers participate in. You're in the community, hands on, feet, shoes, boots on the ground every day. So that means you have established a rapport with the people in this community. That's correct. Yes. So take it from there. Well, uh, I stand it on that. Uh, if you got better uh, communication mm -hmm. uh, with the general public, uh, you can criteria a lot of violence mm -hmm. from occurring before you act. So what we try to do in Friars Point is uh, have a strong leadership communication with the parents, the kids, grandkids, mm -hmm. uh, our pastors, I attend churches, mm -hmm. uh, encourage the officers to attend churches, mm -hmm. uh, speak at churches, so you can build a better report with your community mm -hmm. to keep down violence. If you got violence going on, uh, you suspect it, go and talk to the parents and grandparents, let them know the consequences of uh, the kids' action, if they're involved in anything or not. So when they do get arrested, the parents won't be so shocked or surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't know that about my kid. I ain't mm -hmm. know that about my kid. Because mm -hmm. when it come down, me laying the law down, I'm going to lay it down. That's right. You know, and that's the way it is. And I, right. I, treat, I teach my officers to treat everyone fairly. Mm -hmm. We got what color, what color the creed. That's right. You know, it don't matter uh, who he is. You know, treat him like he's supposed to be treated. Mm -hmm. And then you will gain more respect from the general public. You can't be out there beating up people, shooting people because you have the badge and authority to give you to take a life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's somebody's child. You know, he might not be a nobody to you, but he's a somebody to me mm -hmm. as a chief. And you violate any law, I'm going to deal with you directly. I don't need mayor interfering with my duties as a chief of police. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with you directly right. Right. if I have to put you in jail myself. I'm going to deal with you. Mm -hmm. And I just think throughout this country, we don't have enough chief speaking out the truth about their department. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, as a chief, you need to know what type of officer you got working for you also. Right. And you can learn that from other officers who will tell you what type of officer you got. Uh, do we abuse his power or uh, misuse people? And those officers need to be dismissed or they need to be put in jail uh, like anyone else. You need to do that. You right. know, And you have to let the General public know you are willing to do that. If right. you're not willing to do that, there's no place being a leader and calling yourself as chief if you're not going to speak out for what's right. That's right. And I brought up just speak out for what's right and everything else will fall in place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we uh, as a community, when we got away from church and when we got away from putting God in first in our life, so a lot of these things happen because we've not been taught. Mm -hmm. So as leaders in the community, um, I try to get around to everybody right. and talk to everybody. You know, mm -hmm. every citizen in this town has my cell phone number. Mm -hmm. They can call me 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to respond. Mm -hmm. If I don't come see you, I'm going to call you. Mm -hmm. If I call you, I, mean, I can't get to you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a secretary that will take my message, and uh, I'm going to get her back around to talk to you to see if you're a problem. It might not even be never deal with police. It could be somebody's neighbor's dog. Mm -hmm. But if it's a concern to you, it's a concern to me. Right. And that's what I try to uh, pull out in the community. Wow. And uh, I monitor my officer. I check behind him. I don't let them know I'm checking behind him. Mm -hmm. I check behind him. If something going wrong or uh, shouldn't go that way, he's going to be dealt with mm -hmm. directly with me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have a lot of respect for me, and I have a lot of respect for them. Mm -hmm. But that's a bond issue that it didn't build overnight. It right. took time to build that right. report. And when I'm uh, interviewing an officer, hand officer, mm -hmm. I want to know 
his background. I want to know, do he go to church, what he believes in. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. How you going to treat people behind my back? Right. Can I trust you? Right. And we are dealing with law enforcement now throughout this country not being trustworthy. Mm -hmm. uh, cameras are catching officers violating the law. Mm -hmm. Where if you catch them violating the law, the law needs to handle that. Mm -hmm. If the law handled that, you wouldn't have riots. Right. And burning our cities down, right. you know, um, causing taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, it got to be replaced. That's right. And that comes mm -hmm. out of taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. When the government uh, enforces a state emergency, taxpayer lose. That's right. On, on, on that issue. So, you know, that's my take on that. Uh, stand firm and believe in what you do. And uh, if you got a problem with your department, straighten it up. Mm -hmm. You don't, the federal government is going to come and straighten it up, and they don't know who is who, and more violence could occur because, mm -hmm. regardless of how many uh, uh, gang members or uh, violent people we have out here, uh, we got a president that can just declare war on people. You know, mm -hmm. that's the authority he has. Mm -hmm. You know, the chief of police can call other chief of police, say, I need a certain, certain amount of officers. Mm -hmm. They're going to respond. So that that's not going to stop them. You know, you, you create more probably more death for the community. So we have to have an ending point. Mm -hmm. And to the young people in Baltimore, violence is not the answer. Right. It's not the answer. Right. Burning cities down, uh, watching on news, a nursing home, uh, were caught on fire by looting. Right. You know, that's, that's not the way to go. Right. That's wait and see if justice going to prevail uh, for this victim. You know, right. it's about him. Right. You know, it doesn't matter what name he has. Mm -hmm. You know, if he mm -hmm. had a small name, but the community would turn into a big name. Right. So a lot of time is the, the a lot of people think the little thing get left out. No, mm -hmm. somebody is somebody to everybody. That's right. You know, and, and, and um, people need to start respecting each other. Yeah. Respecting each other's rights. Yes. You know, and uh, that's just my my point issue only. I just hope it don't happen in my community. But you know, I always have to prepare myself when I watch uh, television to see. Uh, what's going on around the world. Right. You know, and uh, stay firm to stay up on top of things in my community. Because even just a little small town here, about 1,450 people, people's talking about Baltimore. Right. And uh, I tell the people, it could happen anywhere. Right. A riot could break out and happen anywhere. Right. You know, so we have to educate our kids. This is not the right thing to do. Well, one thing, Chief Vance, that I truly appreciate about all the things that you have said uh, that type of thing won't happen in your community because you are holding your officers accountable. Yes. And, and not only do you hold them accountable personally yes. as officers, they have taken a oath of office. And what it sounds like to me is that you understand the oath of office that you took and you will uphold the Constitution regardless. Yes, and that's all that we're asking for. And this officer that is in charge is a black man who said it doesn't matter what your color is. Crime is crime. You break the law. We're going to deal with you. However, you're not going to get murdered in Friars Point, Mississippi by a police. You are responsible for your actions as a member of this community. And what it sounds like that Chief Vance is saying, he's a part of the community. So he puts his whole body and soul into it so they know that it isn't just a man in a uniform. That's correct. You feel them. Yes. So, sir, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We thank God for yes. you. We know that it's the spirit of the Most High that resides in you yes. that has been transferred to your officers. You are one of the remnant that the Father has called out. Yes. And we're grateful. And we're here to support everything that you're doing.